Melorus bivitalis, also known as the Burmese python. In fact, because they are snakes that don't belong here, but they have uh, adaptations that allow them to live and survive very well in these kinds of conditions. They camouflage perfectly in the Everglades. They are very hard to find, and they are very much outcompeting our native predators. Originating from Southeast Asia, the Burmese python now lives comfortably in the warm tropical wetlands of Southwest Florida slowly but in a stealthy manner. The Burmese Empire is continuing to grow at a terrorizing rate, with more than 150,000 crawling through this habitat, devouring the natives by first squeezing the last breath out of them. Eradication is nearly impossible. They lay 100 eggs at a time and grow up to 19 feet. They are continuing to get closer and closer, ranging from Key Largo to Big Cypress and into the Everglades. Taurus volitans, scorpion, devil. Hades has arrived in Florida's waters and is destroying everything in its path, paralyzing its prey and subjecting them to excruciating pain. Released from the darkest of an aquarium in the year 1985, Dania, Florida. The first sight of this monster on the tranquil Gulf of Mexico was in 2010, Pensacola, Florida. It is hastily creating its immortal army, spawning every two to four days, laying up to 30,000 eggs per spawn. The natives stand no chance to defeat this villain. The lionfish is an ambush predator, eating almost every hour, expanding its stomach to 30 times its size, usually at dusk or dawn to mimic the conditions of the underworld. This animal has no known predators in Florida waters can withstand harsh conditions, live permanently in one location. The native species have declined by 80% where the lionfish is present. More than 17 estuary native fish and crustaceans have been found in its stomach. How can we help the native fish? The African honeybee, also known as killer bee, is an extremely aggressive creature originated from Africa but was then transported to Brazil. In Brazil, the goal of their introduction was to increase honey production. Instead of accomplishing this goal, things turned completely around and went horribly wrong. The bees reproduced at a rapid speed and can now be found in many southern parts of the North American continent. The African honeybees quickly became a torment to both native species, ecosystems, our crops, and finally, to us. The African honeybees reproduce more than they pollinate, and this takes a big hit on our crops. It's even harder to get rid of these bees because doing so could harm the European bees that are crucial to our production of these crops. Overall, this horrid bee is taking over and eliminating everything in its path. Although innocent looking, the cane toad is anything but that. Originally from South and Central America, these toads are considered a nuisance in many places. They were first introduced into Florida as a means of controlling sugar cane pests, but soon they became more than just that. Once the lagoon was connected to the rest of Florida's canal systems, the cane toads started popping up everywhere. Slowly they started taking over, eating and also competing with species that are native to our land. A key weapon that they use against their predators are the huge glands around their neck. These glands secrete toxic poison that can kill native predators even household pets. Swaying with the wind, the Australian pine lines many areas that are close to seawater. Standing tall, they may seem sturdy, but that is the last word that can be used to describe them. The rooting system is shallow compared to that of other plant species, and this takes a toll on our beaches. When strong winds blow, the Australian pine topples over and this allows beach erosion to occur. The roots are not only at fault for causing beach erosion, but they also disturb the habitats of native species. Endangered animals are at risk because these trees can hinder their ability to create coastal nests among roots. The Australian pine is a fierce plant that won't back down against native species and will spring up in places where native plants have been destroyed from storms. Their fast growth and leaf litter can lead to the extinction of native plants and therefore its expansion should be controlled. Canis latrans, 
another beast trying to reign over Florida's land. Encounters between people and coyotes in Florida are occurring more and more often. They are quickly becoming used to people and are losing fear. Sightings of coyotes during the day are increasing. If they aren't scared of us, then we are definitely doomed. Not only are they competition to other mammals, like the Florida panther and bobcats, but they are also excessively eating the smaller mammals. They adapt quickly and can adjust to almost any conditions. They prey on endangered species and it seems as we are losing the battle.